So out of the ring and the scale of it, it's incredible. Across this massive world, there are tons of things you need to seek out, you want to seek out. Today I bring you 5 plus mistakes you don't want to be making, which will lead you to losing out on some of the best items in this game. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video leaving a like it really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Now I will say, these are just what I've missed out on due to progressing too quick, killing the wrong NPC or even making the wrong choices at that moment in time. I dare say there are hundreds of more instances like these and if you guys know of any or have experienced any please let the world know by leaving a comment down below so hopefully they don't make the same mistake and miss same said thing. Okay so let's start and get into it. So first of guys early access to the incredible farming area known as the Morgwin Siofa River. More specifically the Palace Approach and the Morgwin Dynasty. This area right here guys is home to four of the best farms in the entire game. Some call them exploits. But there's an easy way to get here which you can do early on. Or there's a hard way to get here which takes you a trek through the game. And you have to come up to basically end game areas. And you don't want to do that. Okay so when you take out one of the first couple of bosses. His name's Godric the Grafted. You can then the guys come back down to where you started the game right at that first step spawning point that grace point if you come back here guys and look left there will be a glowing rock on the floor if you interact with these guys you start a new mini quest for an item which you can basically do this in about 30 minutes max which allows you to teleport to that secret farming area so once you activate this rock guys it triggers a quest for the white face fari i believe it's pronounced v-a-r-r-e i ain't got a clue Sounds French though. Now this mini quest will take place at the Rose Church, right here on your map. Once you come here guys, you'll see the NPC leading up the front of this church. Now I know a lot of people, a lot of people including me on my very first playthrough, I killed this dude. My friend hit the dude, ruined the quest. So yes guys, you don't want to be doing that. You want to do his quest, finish his quest guys, and he gives you this amazing item known as the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. This when used at your inventory will teleport you to said area and it's definitely something new players to the game want to be taken advantage of because there's farms there for ruins which will level you up in no time at all guys. So yes, make sure you don't make that mistake in hitting or killing that vendor early on. Next up guys, we have a vendor which when you actually first meet him, you actually fight him. His name is Patches. Now Patches is first seen in a murk water cave located right here. Once you traverse to the very bottom and enter his basically his like his area, once you loot his chest, he will spawn in behind you and he will start a boss battle. Now once you take him down to half health, he does surrender. Now you can go on and kill him, but if you do, you miss out on a couple of good things. So don't kill him. If you do not kill him guys, he becomes your vendor. He becomes a vendor in game and he sells some very, very decent items. Namely the missionary cookbook 2, which allows you to craft the gold pickled foul foot, which when you apply this, it gives you 30% extra runes for like 3 minutes. So it makes rune farming a lot more efficient. But he also plays a major part in earning one of the best tank armors later on in the game. So yes guys, when you first meet Patches within that Murkwater cave, do not kill him. When he surrenders guys, just leave him be and the fight will finish. Simple as that. So sticking with Patches, you eventually come to an area known as Volcano Manor. This is semi end game. I mean it's probably about the midway point. Actually, you know what? Given how big this game is, it's probably not even that. It's probably, I don't know, 30% in for me anyway. But hey, you can come here when you want. There's no rush. You can explore other areas first. But when you eventually get here, guys, there will be a vendor waiting for you sitting down, a lady by the name of Tanif. Now, when you speak to her, she will give you basically a kill assassin quest where pinpoint on your map, you have to go to said spot and you'll basically be invaded. Now, upon doing these quests for her, these assassination kills for her, you then have a chance to fight Rykard, who is the main boss of the Volcano Manor. But guys, 
Before you do this, you need to go and speak to Patches, who can be located in the hallway, because Patches will give you another Kill Assassin quest, which if you complete guys, you get one of the best tank armor sets in the entire game, known as the Bull Go Armor. Now the problem is, if you destroy and kill Rykard, the main boss of Volcano Manor, before coming back and doing Patches' quest line, what happens is after you kill Rykard, all the vendors and NPCs leave Volcano Manor, losing your chance in getting the whip and that amazing tank armor set, the Bulgo armor. So yes guys, just be wary of that and make sure you do all what's needed for you from patches to get this armor set. Next up guys, and a bit further on in the game, we have important items and amazing items rewarded after you complete the Rani quest line. Now Rani's quest starts later on in the game after you've made your way through uh, Carrier Manor right here at Rani's chamber, well Rani's actual rise, Rani's chamber is a grace at the top. But coming here guys and starting her quest gives you some decent loot along the way. But about halfway through she gives you an item called the Carrion Inverted Statue. Now this is very important and it actually can have an effect on the ending of the game. Now it's not something you need, it's not something necessary, but what's with said item that can change the ending for you is an item you don't want to miss, especially if you're a mage, as it gives you five intellect points for free just by using it in your talisman slot. It's basically an incredible talisman, so you don't want to miss this. So once you get that carrion uh, inverted statue, you want to come to the study hall. Once you're in here guys, you can place the statue on the table and what it does guys, it turns the study hall upside down and it allows you to progress on and get the stargazer heirloom uh, talisman, which gives you the five extra intelligence points as well as said item that can change the ending for you. So yes guys, this is something, I mean you may not be fussed about, but it's something I recommend you don't miss just in case. Another part of Rani's questline, once you complete it guys, if you go back to Rani's Rise, sitting outside on the step depending on your progress in the game, Blade may be sitting there. He's an NPC, dressed like a werewolf, looks absolutely incredible, I'm sure you know who he is, but well, he'll actually want to fight you. If you kill him, you get his entire armor set. Well, minus his helmet, which is located just around the corner from here, but you also get his sword as well, which is incredible. So that's something you may want to keep in mind. Okay, so next up, guys, we have the Rivers of Blood Katana. One of the best weapons in the game, no doubt, when it's actually fixed. It has a bug at the minute where it doesn't scale properly, but as soon as they fix this, guys, it will be one of the best weapons in this game. The problem is, guys, there's a good chance that you can easily miss it and not be able to go back and get it. So within the mountain tops of the giants, we have this place here called the Church of Repose. If you come here guys, before doing anything else mainly in this area, you will be invaded by a guy called Bloody Finger Okina. If you kill this guy, if you kill this invader, you are rewarded his amazing Okina mask and also this Rivers of Blood Kitana. But me, being an utter idiot, I didn't realise he was there. I progressed on and I defeated the fire giant. Now if you've defeated the fire giant before you've got the rivers of blood katana, you actually can't go back. The NPC doesn't spawn in if you've already defeated the main boss of this area, which is unfortunate. And as far as I'm aware, you have to wait until a new game plus before you can get this weapon. Which sucks, but hey, at least we ain't totally out. So yes guys, once you make your way up to the mountain tops of the giants, make sure you get the Rivers of Blood Katana, make sure you seek out the Bloody Finger Okina before progressing on and taking on the Fire Giant because it's something you definitely don't want to miss. So guys, you've probably come to the capital, been here, explored here already, but what I would suggest is guys, you definitely explore this place thoroughly and do what you gotta do here before progressing on to the dragon temple because although i don't want to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't experienced yet this is a situation you get to within the dragon temple where upon you defeating a certain boss the city as you know it the capital as you know it is no more so some things you could have got here you will not be able to obtain again so make sure guys you like i say explore this place thoroughly and get what you need from it because there's quite a few decent items here including some amazing armor sets 
a secret legendary weapon by the name of Bolt of Grand Sex, as well as many other things. Now what I'll do is guys, I'll link videos in the video description of what can be gotten from this place. I myself, I missed that legendary uh, Bolt of Grand Sex because like an idiot I progressed too quick. Whereas a few other things in this area I did myself get, which I definitely recommend you getting too. So like I said guys, explore this place thoroughly. I'll link videos in the video description of all the decent stuff um, and guides I can find from things in this area. So look out for those. So as you progress on guys, eventually within the round table, you will notice a glowing red figure sitting on the floor in the back room. This guy is known as the Dong eater now he does have quite a big part to play and he actually has part in the ending where you can actually change that or actually get that that's something you can miss out on and today i'll explain to you exactly how you want to avoid that so when you first meet him guys when you speak to him nothing will happen but eventually it will start a side quest where you then guys have to go to the capital and go down into the sewers and find this guy once you do this guys you'll then be prompt and you have to take him out when he invades you and you'll do this in this area right here just by the capital so when he invades you guys and you kill him you'll actually get his weapon here now from this point guys you want to go back to the round table and exhaust all his dialogue again what will happen then guys is you will go back to the sewers in the capital once you do this people and i'm trying my hardest here not to spoil anything for you you have to feed him or give him the seed bed curse now there's five of these in total you need to collect the problem is at least one i believe maybe two are located within this capital area so like i said on the last mistake not to make when you progress too far and the city becomes well not as it is you can't actually go and get the seed bed curse the ones are located in this area meaning you can't progress this quest any further now you could just kill him on the spot and take his armor which is pretty cool you could do that the very first time you meet him within the sewers you can kill him straight away and get his armor that's completely fine but it does stop a special part with an ending and i'll say no more so yes guys if you don't want to miss that make sure you collect all five seed bed curses it is as simple as that before progressing too far into that dragon temple now upon what happens at the dragon temple and the impact it has on the capital you can still go down into the sewers and see Dongita, but like i said you just can't give him all of what he needs so keep that in mind and there we have it guys those are the mistakes well mainly the mistakes i have made already and hoping i can help somebody out by warning you in advance now if you have any tips for any new players or people who have not long started please drop a comment down below and let them know you may even help me out too you never know guys but there we have it guys five plus mistakes i hope you do not make and i hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave in a like it really helps out if you like what you see and want to see more out of ring be sure to subscribe and if you never want to miss a video i upload you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button but guys, thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one.